Hello, I'm Ryan from Buster Beagle 3D. Today I will be reviewing the Ortur Afero Laser 1. It is the latest laser that was sent to me by Ortur to try out and give my opinion on. Do I like it? How does it compare to the Laser Master 2 and the Laser Master 2 Pro that I have done reviews on before? Well, let's find out. The Ortur Afero, if I'm saying that right, came well packed just like all the other Ortur machines that I have received in the past. This machine honestly was the easiest to assemble and get running by just attaching the diode module to the frame and connecting the laser wire and the ground wire. It's very beginner friendly and can be set up by anyone. It comes with everything you need to get up and running, including some test pieces and of course some safety goggles. The Afero is available in three options, which is essentially just a choice of the laser that comes with the machine that I will go over in a second. All options come with the engraving and cutting area of 180 by 180 millimeters. So as you can see, it's about a quarter of the Laser Master 2 or the Laser Master 2 Pro. The frame is constructed of aluminum extrusion and these acrylic panels for the feet as well as the X and Y axis plates. The machine runs off of two NEMA 17 stepper motors that ride on the Y axis. The machine has a motherboard that seems to be very similar to the one in the Laser Master 2 Pro with a 32-bit motherboard and a 24-volt power supply. It also has a port in the front for the offline controller, just like the Pro. Unlike the Pro, there is no emergency stop or flame detector, but the ports on the motherboard seem to be there, so I'm guessing you could add those in the future if you really wanted to. It still comes with all the safety features as the Laser Master 2, with a shutoff if the bump detection or a shutoff if the computer is disconnected, and a shutoff if the machine detects that the laser is on but not moving. All to prevent fires, but this and all lasers really should never be run unattended. The Alfero is also spec'd out to run at 5,000 millimeters per minute. This is about half the speed listed for the Pro, but I'm guessing that it has more to do with the build and the acrylic components than the laser and the power of the motherboard itself. The machine can also run with the free program laser gerbil that seems to be working with Ortor to develop settings to use with their brand, but can also be used with commercial software such as the popular program Lightburn. You can either run jobs hooked up to your computer or to the additional offline controller. So that's really what comes standard on all versions. Now I will talk about the different options that you can pick when ordering this machine. The Alfero comes with three different laser options to fit the needs of what you want to do with this machine. All of the laser options are fixed focus, so you only need to use the included spacers to get the correct focal length, but it's still a good idea to check the laser spot using your safety goggles and this little anodized aluminum plate to get the smallest focal point possible. The first laser option available is the LU2-2. It is the weakest laser of the three at 1.6 watts, but does have the smallest focal point of the group at 0.07 by 0.06 millimeters. This is really an option for those intending to only mostly do engraving. You may be able to cut things such as paper and fabrics, but they wouldn't be able to really cut through things like wood. This laser comes with a laser shield and an aluminum spacer that you place under the heatsink and not the laser lens to properly space the module height from the cutting or engraving piece. The second option is the LU2-4SF or short focus laser module. This is a much more powerful laser with 5.5 watts of power and the laser spot of 0.12 by 0.15 millimeters. This laser also comes with a shield but uses a different type of spacer to find the proper height of the module from the workpiece. This laser uses a little small flat orange piece of plastic that you place in between the laser shield and the workpiece. The laser shield is also magnetic, so it's very easy to pop on and off. This would be the best option for engraving harder materials and does a decent job at cutting as well. I was able to very easily cut through 4.5 millimeters of wood in one pass using this laser. The last and final option for the Ortur Afero 
is the LU2-4LF, or Long Focus. This module is also 5.5 watts and has the largest laser spot at 0.17 by 0.25 millimeters and focuses the same way with the same aluminum cylinder as the LU2-2, where it's placed in between the heatsink and the workpiece. However, this one came with something that was a bit of a surprise as there was really not any information on this machine when it was first sent to me. The laser module comes with a long-awaited hardware for attaching an air assist. This makes the laser module the most powerful cutting laser out of the group. The air assist is used to remove smoke and debris from the path of the laser to make sure you are getting the full power of the laser to cut or engrave. This leaves you with a much cleaner cut, as well as preventing surface charring and other blemishes from the edge cut. As you can see with this piece, one of them was cut with using the air assist and one of them was not. Even with the thicker piece, you can see that there's no charring on the top of the piece and it produces a much cleaner cut. This machine does not come with an air pump, but does come with the nozzle, tubing, and airflow regulator. I just purchased a fish air tank pump and found a way to attach the tubing to it. If you know of a good air pump that will fit the hardware that comes with the Alfaro, please leave a comment down below. I probably would have gone with an air pump with more pressure, but it still seemed to perform pretty well for me. To attach the air assist to the LU2-4LF, you need to remove the heat shield from the module. You then use the supplied Allen wrench to remove the little grub screw from the back of the module. You can then unscrew the large red cone that's covering the lens. You then attach the air assist nozzle over the lens and tighten it into place with this grub screw. Then you take the small connector and unscrew the fitting on the side. Screw the main section of the connector onto the air assist nozzle, making sure to point in the direction you want the hose to go out and tighten it with a flathead screwdriver. You can see here that I originally had the connector on the right side while filming, but later switched that over to the left side. That way it routed the hose the way that I wanted it to. I then took the part I removed from the connector and slid that over the tubing. I then pushed the tubing onto the port and then tightened the screw on that part. This addition easily allowed me to cut through wood with no charring on the top surface at all. It's really what you want if you are going to be doing a lot of cutting. Now, this won't beat a CO2 laser if that's what you are primarily going to be doing with your laser engraver, but it's a great addition to this machine and to the Otor laser family. I ran a few small jobs using this machine and tried out all three lasers since Otor was nice enough to send me all three to try out. I made some picture engravings using the lowest power laser, which came out pretty good. I'm sure with a little tweaking, I would be able to get some very nice results with that. I also used the short focus laser to cut wood, but also used it to try out the Norton white tile method and got some very nice engravings on the white tile. Uh, I also tried out the long focus laser with an air assist and was able to cut through about 6.5 millimeters of wood with three passes and again, no top surface charring. I used it to make this little layered logo from Buster Beagle 3D, which also came out very nice. I also made some coasters with a monogram that also worked out great. Um, I was able to engrave text in aluminum with the short focus laser. Uh, I had to mark the area up with a Sharpie first to make sure the laser didn't simply bounce off the surface. Another trick that you may or may not know to remove permanent marker from a hard surface uh, the best and easiest way that I know to do this is to use a dry erase marker over the permanent marker and then it just wipes away. You can see that even on the hard surface, the short focus laser did a really good job of engraving even at a very small font size. So for my overall thoughts on this machine and my opinion on if you should go for this machine or something like the Laser Master 2 Pro, I would have to say it depends. The first consideration has to be the size. 
I actually welcome the smaller size of this machine because I rarely have a project that utilizes the full area of the Pro. It's much easier to find a place to store this if you don't need it out all day, so it's portable, it's easy to take outside or anywhere else that you need to make sure that you're using this machine in a well-ventilated area to prevent breathing in any fumes. The second consideration would be the speed of this machine. It has all of the power of the other Ortor models, with the Air Assist even potentially more powerful, uh, but it's the same speed as the Laser Master 2, but only about half of the speed of the Laser Master 2 Pro. Again, this has to do primarily with the overall build and design of the Alfaro, with a single X-axis support, rather than the Pro with a solid all-metal frame with two points of connection for the X-axis. The last consideration would be the price. This machine comes in at about $170 cheaper than the Laser Master 2 Pro with a comparable laser at the time of filming of this review. Those prices seem to be in flux quite often, so be sure to find the option that works best for you. Another consideration, even between these models, is the type of laser that you're using. So if I have this short focus, and I were to compare it to something like the lower power version that you can get with this machine, uh, I was able to engrave this image, and the one on the left was done in about 29 minutes, and the one on the right was done with the lower power laser, which was done in about an hour and 15 minutes. So even the different options with this machine, you're able to uh, go much faster if you get the higher power laser versus one of the lower power ones. So that's it for now. If you have any questions about this laser engraver, feel free to leave a comment below and I'll try my best to answer it. You can also check out a very good Facebook group dedicated to the Ortur machines with over 20,000 members who are more than willing to share their knowledge and help out. It's how I found out about the Norton white tile method, which I really liked. If you want to see more about laser engravers, 3D printers, injection molding, CNC, and all things 3D, please do hit that like button and consider subscribing to my channel for future videos coming out soon. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time.